Hello everybody, Timothy Bailey here. I thought we would do something different today and look at a couple poems. Poems are a good way to practice uh, the rhythm, the pattern of your speaking. Also a good way to learn vocabulary. Let's go ahead and start uh, by looking at this poem. This poem is called Clouds. And I wanted to look at some of the vocabulary in here. And I've tried to uh, separate the vocabulary into words that are helpful outside of this poem and words that maybe you just need to know them for this poem. So on the left, I'm going to have the vocabulary that is useful everywhere or useful to know. So the first word, clouds, right? and you can practice saying it, clouds, tumble, tumble, spill out, spill out. Notice this is a phrasal verb, a verb phrase with the verb and the preposition. Evoke, evoke. Then over here, words that are not very useful except for understanding the poem. Avalanche, avalanche. Ogre, ogre. One more over here, clenched, clenched. And then one that's sort of halfway between something uh, very useful and something not useful, missed, missed. Let's go ahead and look at some pictures for what these are, right? Here we have our clouds, you can see, right? Different clouds. Uh, see this little child, right? They are tumbling, tumbling, right? Tumbling is sometimes uh, to accidentally fall. Tumbling is also what we use uh, in gymnastics, which is when you do it on purpose. So it can be either one. It's just tumbling is the falling or the rolling over, okay? Sometimes if we knock something over, uh, we say they tumble over, right? That would be an accident usually, but people can do the same. Here we go. We have the mug with what looks like it could be coffee, possibly tea, right? And it is spilling out, right? right. Here, maybe the mug has been tipped over. It is tumbling over, right? So now the inside, the coffee, is spilling out out. This is evoke, right? So I have the definition. This is a verb to call up or produce, such as to evoke memories, to elicit or draw forth, to call up, cause to appear, to produce or suggest through artistry, right? So basically all of these are very similar, right? Bringing something out or forward, right? A memory or an idea is to evoke something. So for example, I might see something that reminds me of my childhood. It is a memory. I could say that thing evokes memories of my childhood. It's calling forth memories of when I was young. Here we go. You can see the snow. This is an avalanche. An avalanche is when a lot of snow falls down the side of a mountain. If you've seen this movie, this guy, his name is Shrek. He is an ogre, right? An ogre. So this word's useful for this poem and it's useful for this movie, but outside in the rest of the world, probably not. Clenched. This person has a clenched fist, right? To hold something tightly, right? We can also use it to describe us holding something, right, in our hand. For example, our child, right? They might clench our hand, right? Very tightly. And the last one, missed. Sometimes 
when it's cool and warm in the morning at the same sort of time uh, around the trees, there is a mist, right? Mist can also be sort of a light rain, right? There is a difference between mist and fog, right? Uh, but they look very, very similar when you see them. All right, let's go ahead and look at our poem. And I will read it and you can read along as well. Right, so Clouds by Colin West. Above me I see mountains, the mountains of the sky. They tumble down and spill about so silently till I can see them change to other things. For now their shapes evoke an avalanche of cotton wool or puffs of engine smoke. And now here comes an ogre with a club clenched in his fist. His footsteps sound like thunder, but he fades away in mist. And now I see a mighty horse, and now a flock of sheep. And now I see the shepherd boy, a lying down to sleep. Okay, so a very simple poem, right, with two stanzas. Stanzas in poetry are like paragraphs in essay writing. So one stanza and two stanzas. What is the title of the poem? If you said clouds, you are right. So the title is clouds, a very short title. And who is the author? Do we remember this word? Author, same as writer, right? The author is Colin West. Colin West. What is the narrator doing? So the narrator, if you don't remember, in a poem, in a short story, in a novel, even when you tell a story, the narrator is the person telling the story or the person sort of doing the action, right? So when you tell a story, you are automatically the narrator. Here, you can tell it's a narrator, right? just like when you're speaking, because I, right, I see, I can see, right? So a lot of I sees here, right? This is the narrator speaking, right, to us, right, talking to us. So what is the narrator doing when they see? They're seeing the clouds. They are looking at the clouds. I don't know if you've ever done this. When I was a child, I used to like to lay down in the grass and look up at the sky and just think about all the things the clouds could be, the shapes, right? When we do that, what do we do? What are we using? What is the narrator using to see these things in the clouds, to see the mountains, right, to see them as cotton wool, an avalanche of cotton wool. What is the narrator using? It's a very big word, something in our mind, sort of. It is our imagination. So when we lay down and we look at the clouds and we see these things and engines with smoke and ogre, we are using our imagination because the clouds are not really mountains or an engine with smoke, or an ogre, right? We are pretending to see those by the shape of the clouds, right? So what does the narrator see? Well, the narrator sees mountains, okay? And the mountains are tumbling down and spilling about all over the place. But then they change to other things. An avalanche of cotton wool and if you remember the picture of the avalanche at the beginning, it does sort of look like clouds, right? Like they've fallen down on the mountain. Or it's a puff of engine smoke. So when an engine on a train pff, pff, puts out the smoke, those look like clouds. And down here, there's even more imaginative stuff. So an ogre like Shrek with a club in his fist. Right? And a horse. The narrator sees and a flock of sheep and who goes with the sheep well the shepherd boy so the narrator in one cloud or more than one cloud sees some sheep then in another cloud nearby probably the narrator sees to go with the sheep 
the shepherd boy, who looks like he is lying down to go to sleep. Okay. All right. Let's read it one more time. You can read it with me. Clouds. Above me I see mountains, the mountains of the sky. They tumble down and spill about so silently till I can see them change to other things. For now their shapes evoke an avalanche of cotton wool or puffs of engine smoke. And now here comes an ogre with a club clenched in his fist. His footsteps sound like thunder, but he fades away in mist. And now I see a mighty horse and now a flock of sheep. And now I see the shepherd boy a lying down to sleep. I hope you enjoyed this poem. Looking for our next video, we're going to do another uh, poem. Uh, take a picture of the screen, practice the poem, practice the rhythm of the words and the lines of the poem. Thank you and have a great day.